from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Ansel Garrett, Johnny. I'm calling from a gas station up near the three-mile grade, ten miles north of the lake. Trouble? Plenty. Johnny, seems like when you go looking for people, it always turns out to be bad luck for them. What do you mean? You came up here to Crystal Lake looking for Edward Russell. He turned up dead. Now you've been looking for Hiram, the taxi driver. Don't tell me. I'm afraid so. We just fished his body out of a ravine. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Amalgamated Life Associates Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is a final accounting of expenses and report of my investigation of the Crystal Lake matter. (laughs) Item 9, $1, tip to the garage man to get my car out in a hurry. I drove up to the three-mile grade. Deputy Sheriff Ansel Garrett was waiting for me beside the highway and led the way down the ravine. Watch the foot, Johnny. It's pretty tricky. Yeah. Who discovered Hiram's body? One of my boys patrolling the highway. He spotted a glint of metal down here in the moonlight. Yeah, here we are. Yeah. Oh, brother. Taxi cab and all, huh? What a wreck. Yeah. He crashed the guardrail and came down the slope. I doubt if it was an accident, Ants. When a guy's got a bullet hole in his forehead, it's no accident, Johnny. Looks like the same person who killed Russell killed Hiram to shut his mouth. I guess that's about the size of it. Hiram's murder opens up another keg of nails, Ants. How so? Well, Betty's story is that the last she saw of Russell the night he was murdered was when he drove away in Hiram's taxi. But that story depended on Hiram for confirmation. You'll never be able to confirm it now. Well, earlier tonight you were beat because you were fresh out of suspects, Johnny. Now you got a real live one again. Maybe. But trying to find a motive to fit Betty Norton as a blind alley. The only one who could benefit financially from Russell's death is his wife, Leona. And she was in Denver at the time. I still think Russell's murder ties in with the fact that he came up here looking for somebody named Bill and apparently had it in for him. It could be. Trouble is, Johnny, we got too many guys by that name at Crystal Lake. Bill Cullen, the hotel bartender, Bill Jensen at the boathouse. Both of them are still possibilities, Ants. The bartender had a fight with Russell on the night of the murder. And it was one of Bill Jensen's padlocks on the cabin where the body was found. Yeah, that's true enough. Whoever killed Russell and hid his body in Bixby's vacant cabin didn't know that Bixby was planning on selling the place and would bring somebody up to show it and discover the body. Sounds real convincing, Johnny. Now, all you have to do is figure out somebody's name for the whoever and a good motive, and you're all set. Oh, yeah, sure. Real simple. You know, one thing that's been bothering me from the start, though. Why did the killer plant Russell's body in a cabin? With all the wide open spaces around here, why a cabin? Yeah, you could have figured dogs or animals would uncover the body if it was outside somewhere. How about the lake? The bodies have a way of coming to the surface. Yeah, I guess you're right. If we could only have gotten to Hiram before this. You happen to know where he lived? No, a little rooming house not far from the hotel. You through here? No, not yet, Johnny. I got a couple of my boys beating the bush around here. Okay, I'll head back to town and see if I can turn up anything of interest at Hiram's rooming house. On the way back to the village, I stopped at Betty Norton's Lakeshore Mansion, but she wasn't at home. Her housekeeper told me she'd gone to Denver for a couple of days. On hearing that, my interest in her as a suspect shot up again. Expense account item 10, $1.45, long distance call to the Denver police, requesting them to try to locate Betty Norton for further questioning. Then I went to the rooming house where Hiram had lived. I couldn't find anything in his room that would give me a lead on his killer. But as I was coming out, I found someone in the hall who might. Huh? Well, Bill the bartender. Oh, hello, Dollar. What are you doing here? It's real simple. I live here. Oh, same rooming house as Hiram, huh? That's right. Now, look, don't go trying to tie me into his murder. We was friends. I didn't know the news of his killing was out. How did you know he was dead, Bill? Well, I, I, 
I just talked to one of Vance Garrett's boys at the hotel. He told me. Oh, I see. No, you don't see, Dolly. You still fight. Look, uh, whoever killed Hiram is the same one who killed Russell. You had a fight with Russell on the night of his death. Yeah, well, I explained that to you before. He was looking for somebody named Bill. He thought I was the one, got tough about it. But that's all there was to it. I didn't kill him. I didn't kill Hiram. You'll never prove it I did. Yeah, going round and round on the merry-go-round. Somewhere along the line, I must have missed something. But I didn't know what. I decided to go back and start from the beginning. In this case, Bixby's cabin, where Russell's body was discovered. I found Bixby in the hotel bar. Hi, Dollar. Care for a drink? No, no thanks, Bixby. Well, I got a little good news earlier this evening. Sheriff Garrett told me he was through checking over my cabin so I can get it cleaned up and repainted now. You gonna advertise it again? Yeah, yeah, I'm not too optimistic about my chances of selling it, though. Even though the location of it's been kept out of the papers, everybody at Crystal Lake here knows about it. Uh, <clears throat> you never found out who put that new padlock on the door, huh? Oh, the lock came from Jensen's boathouse. But we haven't been able to tie in Bill Jensen with any of the rest of it. Look, Bixby, you mind if I take another look around your cabin? Not at all, Dolly. You want me to go with you? No, that won't be necessary. Okay. Here's the key. Help yourself. It was my last chance. Maybe there was something in the cabin that neither Ansel Garrett nor I had noticed before. Something, anything that would give me a lead. I spent an hour going through it inch by inch, and I drew a great big blank. Everything was in place. Nothing had been touched. Even my cigarette butt on the front porch and Bixby's cigar wrapper twisted in a knot where we'd sat and talked after he'd reenacted the discovery of Russell's body. Inside, only marks on the floor where Ansel Garrett's boys had measured the distance of the body from the door, stuff like that. But as far as anything that would give me a fresh lead, there was nothing, nothing at all. I was licked and I knew it. Mr. Dollar. Good evening, Mrs. Russell. I just dropped in to say goodbye. Well, that was very thoughtful of you. Please come in. Thanks. When are you leaving? I'm checking out in the morning. What are your plans? I'm not sure, Mr. Dollar. I'll probably get rid of the house in Denver and take an apartment for a while. After that, I, I don't know. Have you filed your claim yet on your husband's insurance policy? No, not yet. My lawyer will take care of it for me. I'd rather not have any more to do with things like that personally than I can help. Mr. Dollar, have you gotten anywhere with your investigation? Have you found anyone at all who could have had a reason to kill my husband? To tell you the truth, Mrs. Russell, up to now I've got no... Then I saw it. Something in Leona Russell's room. Just a little thing. But all of a sudden, the whole deal slid neatly into place. But I had to be sure... Somehow, I had to start the ball rolling and see what happened. You were saying, Mr. Dollar? Oh, yeah. I, I was saying that up to now, I haven't been able to get any... Uh, what time is it? Well, um, well, a quarter to ten. Oh, i got to make a phone call. Mind if I use your phone? Well, uh, no, not at all. I was supposed to call Deputy Sheriff Garrett to check on a new lead. And uh, if it's panned out, looks like we're in. Deputy Sheriff Garrett. Johnny Dollar, Ants. Uh, how's that new lead look? Huh? What new lead? Yeah, good. Hey, what are you... Oh, maybe putting on an act for somebody, Johnny? That's right. Well, looks like we're on the right track at last. Uh, you can't beat a lab test. Thanks, Ants. Something new has developed, Mr. Dollar? Yeah. Looks like we're finally closing in on the right man, Mrs. Russell. I gotta run now. Got a date with the sheriff. But I'll keep you posted. I went outside her hotel cottage and waited. I could hear her on the phone. In a moment, she came out, started along the trail near the lakeshore. I followed. I was sure I was finally getting close to Russell's killer. But then a gun barrel on my back told me I'd gotten a little too close. Hold it, Dollar. Well, Mr. Bixby. Surprise? As a matter of fact, no. Bill? Is that you, Bill? 
Dollar. Hello, Leona. Leona, you stupid little... Falling for a gag like Dollar just pulled on you. But I had to talk to you, to warn you. Looks like you're a little stupid too, Bixby. Huh? I just spotted one of them in Leona's cottage. I told you I should never have come to your cottage, Leona. You insisted. I had to see... That's what threw me about you, Bixby. Clarence Bixby, but a middle name of William, huh? Wilford, if it'll do you any good now. It was you and Leona right from the start. Her husband found out about it, but all he had to go on was the name Bill. Somehow he got a lead that brought him up here to Crystal Lake. Of course I arranged for him to get the lead. Yeah, you wanted to be easy to find. You had Hiram, the taxi driver, decoy Russell to you, then killed Hiram to shut his mouth. Bill, get rid of him. Then you killed Russell in your own cabin and left his body. There. I had to. The people in the next cabin moved in that night. I was afraid they'd see me if I moved the body. So you played it smart. You stole a padlock from Bill Jensen to throw suspicion on him. Then you advertised your cabin and discovered the body when a prospect wanted to see the place. A pretty neat cover, Bixby. You had a lot of I still have, Dolly. Enough to do what has to be done now. And sweet little Leona Russell, the poor grieving wife. In it with you, right from the start. Hurry up and do it, Bill. Then you and I can... Oh, no, that's where you're wrong, Leona. It's not going to be you and I anymore. Bill, you can't say that. You engineered the whole deal right from the start, and I'm sick of it. I'm getting out. You can't get out, Bill. You hear me? You can't. You're in this as deep as I am, and you... Oh, yes. I can get out all right, Leona. I know one good way. Oh, yes, I've used it before, and it works. Here's for you, baby. Bill, no! Bill! He swung the gun toward her. I drove at him, but too late. Oh, God! I hit him twice in the face and I went down. I bent over Leona, but she was gone. She must have been dead when she hit the ground. Eleventh and final item on expense account, $145.20. Transportation and incidentals from Crystal Lake home. Total expenses, $423 even. Remarks about Bixby. In jail, awaiting trial on three counts of murder. Edward Russell, Hiram, Leona Russell. About Leona, who'd engineered the whole deal for a payoff. Well, she got paid off, all right. End of remarks, end of report. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, beginning on Friday night, because I'm sure you'll want to listen to the Republican convention Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week, a simple string of beads, and each bead on it, a motive for murder. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Dick Crenna, Charlotte Lawrence, Gene Tatum, Howard McNear, Forrest Lewis, and Herb Ellis. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Remember, next week's story will start on Friday night because of the Republican convention on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So join us Friday, a week from tonight, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.